So um, we were talking about uh, curriculum and planning and um, and where to to um, to start and where to go with the curriculum. Um, it kind of reminds me of my first teaching job. I had I was teaching uh, I think grade one to nine uh, music and, and French. So I showed up at the school with a binders about this high of curriculum documents because I thought that's what I needed to be able to do that job. And in, in actual fact, I did, technically speaking. But the reality of it is, uh, within those documents, there's a few little nuggets that you need to have as a teacher in order to be able to plan those uh, units. Um, what you need to look at, um, besides the, uh, the concepts that you need to get the kids to, to master, um, assuming that's where you're going is with mastery, is uh, what kind of learning styles your kids have. Because you could design a unit that's pretty much paper and pencil, but uh, you haven't touched the audio or you haven't touched um, the tactile. You, you haven't touched a lot of different learning styles and you might have kids out there that basically don't respond to what you thought would get it all across. So. Um, you need to be able to um, to hit all those bases, and you've got to constantly be conscious of that. Um, in fact, um, there's there's just so many different um, things that come into play. Um, that the gender difference will make a difference. The girls can multitask. The guys tend to be sort of more one task oriented, and they, the the in language classes tend to need a lot more TLC. Like, um, could you redo this again? It's really not very well done, that type of thing. So that uh, they then start to feel accomplished about what they're doing, because they're doing okay. But um, there's just, uh, well, there's a lot uh, in planning. Obviously, your second language education is all related to planning. So um, um, I think read through it, the curriculum, but, but don't get too bogged down in um, too many of the details, mm -hmm. and I <laughs> could have lots of people take me to task on that. <laughs> um, I keep them handy um, because I need to know, do we need to learn devoir? Do we need to learn devoir? Do we have to say um, uh, something in the future? Do we have to know the past tense? Um, those are my parameters, mm -hmm. and then I know where, where I'm going mm -hmm. or, or what the particular um, field of reference is, if, if it's uh, clothing, if it's the future, if it's technology, um, what's the basic vocabulary for this age group consist of? And then um, what's my student group like? Um, do I have a bunch of students there that are uh, going to really take this and fly with it? Can I design a computer project so they can do a lot of research and then report to the class? Or do I have to keep them to like 20 basic words? So. It's a lot of uh, that kind of analysis, and then you start to uh, kind of get more of a feel for it as you work through a few units yourself when you're teaching, and then you say, gee, you know what, I can do this. Um, I don't even have to spend all that time planning. I just can like jot it down, do this, I'm going to take that stuff, and, and I know where I'm going to